there are a couple of millions of such people. And the total health of high worth individuals in 1995 was five million dollars. Today it is fifty million dollars. It was building their economy. But in 2008, the entire collapse of the world was also because of this black money, and so. France and America, Germany took a position that we have to destroy the international black money structure, and so we have to bring down these tax havens and we have to fight the black money. This was the declaration of France and Germany, and they threatened to walk out of the G20 meeting, in which Obama had to accept yes. We will all fight black money together. That is why the black money issue became a huge issue in April 2010, and it is a huge issue for us. Elections afterwards, it went into oblivion, and the amount of black money which has been estimated to have been transferred out of India between 1948 and 2008 is 480 billion dollars, about 21 lakh crores. This is the amount of black money which has gone out from India abroad. This constitutes two thirds of the black money. The balance, one third, another 160 million billion dollars, billion dollars equals about seven lakh crores is in India. So that if you take the total black money generated in this period, it is approximately about 28 to 29 to 30 billion dollars. That, that 29 to 30 lakh crores. You know, this is not ordinary money. This is not the money of the businessmen. This is the money of criminals. This is the money of politicians who have taken bribes, kickbacks. This is not me saying it. This is what the global financial integrity, which has done extensive research into it, it says it is the money which has been built out of crime, kickbacks, and corruption. And this is the money which is there outside, <coughs> and this is linked to the way our politics works, our economics works, our business works, and you will be surprised to know between 2008, between 1948 and 2018, in the 60-year period, out of these 480 billion dollars or 21 lakh crores. Two thirds of the money was generated in the last 20 years, last 18 years between 1990 and 2008. That means this liberalisation and globalisation has promoted black money, created black money, created paper money, and this has robbed the country of 21 lakh crores of valuable capital. So when the black money is so closely linked to corruption, corruption is so closely linked to the political system, bureaucracy, business, world of crime. This requires a very different approach. This requires the way we are looking at things. Our perspective has to change. If at all political parties are part of black money. It's all black money. They can't fight elections. They can't win elections. They are somewhere linked to this whole process of degeneration. And there are many good people in politics. Don't think all political parties are wrong or all politicians are dishonest. No, there are many who are fighting to remain honest. They are fighting against dishonesty, but they cannot do it. No one party can do it. Not a couple of individuals in a party cannot do it. They require large sense of support from the society. That is the work we are trying to do now. Organize the society, create huge network, and try to bring the people near to this concept that the world today has begun looking for alternative, and the Indian alternative is one of the alternatives the world is looking for because this has shown durability. It is not resting on dollars and rupees for lifestyle, and we have a huge harming power here. For instance, even the very idea of respecting our elders, taking care of our parents, looking after the near and dear, informed people, unemployed people—this is happening by the idea of dharma. 
This is not happening by law. Nobody is asking us to take care of our parents. Nobody is asking you to take care of unemployed people or informed people. But in America, these responsibilities have become the responsibilities of the government. What the family does here, the government is asked to do that. With the result, the families have been nationalized in America. And so the government is being privatized. So you can understand that the idea, the government has to take care of unemployed people, informed people, elderly people, people who cannot be taken care of by families because there are no families. The families have been destroyed. The dharmic order, the value-based social order on which the entire civilization functions have been destroyed by the political and economic order in most of the Western countries today. And that is functional here. And that is functional not because of political parties. It is not functional because of parliament. It is not functional because of any intellectual discourse by the media. In fact, all these work against the social order, against the family norms, against the traditions which have safeguarded our economic model, which have preserved the respect for elders, respect for teachers, compassion for children. And this economic order is what the West is looking for today. They can never privatize social security, the responsibilities which the government has taken over. They cannot give it back because there is no family to handle this responsibility. So the world is looking to India, which is now seen as a rising power. We were dismissed 20 years back. We were told that you are no good. Even we told ourselves we are no good. But the situation is different today. So we have a national responsibility and this nation has a global responsibility. And there is no thinking mechanism in this country. We have been great importers of ideas, importers of institutions, importers of laws, importers of models. In the last 50-60 years, even though we attained independence, we never became mentally independent. And so the hunger to free ourselves from the domination of imported thoughts, imported institutions that is represented in a wide circle of socially organized, socially conscious people but they are not nationally organized and time has come for initiatives like this that's why I said all of you are leaders you are not just a constituting audience you are all great transmitters of the ideas which are going to be generated here and so we have now come together and what is the purpose of our coming together? As Arun Hoja said, that we have come together for a purpose. It is not that we have come to spend two days just like that. We are a very serious people. There are very serious people who have come here. As I was telling Arif Bhai, if only his formulation on the Muslim women's bill had been accepted. The course of the country would have changed. But unfortunately, we didn't have leadership of that vision, that courage, that competence to take the country in that direction. There was always a failure of leadership in this country. We will rise up and then there will be a leadership failure and we will stop, stagnate, slip. And this is happening because the entire initiative has been seized by the political system, the media, the modern-minded thinkers who look not to India but elsewhere for developing India. This has to be changed. We have to remove this dependence mentality. And I will come to an end as to how in Maharishi Aravindo's mind the change took place. That will be my concluding part. But today India has an opportunity to present itself to the world what its concept of life is. And that opportunity is not possible by the present dispensation of leadership. The intellectual leadership, the political leadership, the bureaucracy in this country are not trained to deliver this message to the world. China is doing it, 
Japan is doing it. We can't do it because the civilization consciousness which should manifest in the political system, in the intellectual discourse of this country has not yet manifested in the way it should have been. So this Sudeshi Jutan is a beginning. The beginning of networking of thousands and thousands of people who think like this. We have a lot of differences amongst us, but we have no difference about making India a powerful country, a benevolent country, an example to the world, non-exploitative power. The world has only seen exploitation in the last 150 to 200 years. We want to create an alternative model of world view. And so we have come together for that purpose. And it is not limited to merely fighting corruption. It is trying to change the course of our thinking, model of our thinking. And this exercise has to be repeated at regional levels. And more and more people have to be brought in. In about six months to one year, we should be in a position to launch a movement. The movement today, all anti-corruption movements have suffered from very, very limited goals. For instance, movements, the India against corruption movement started targeting corruption and black money. Finally, it ended up arguing for one law. We have so many laws. In India, there is an anti-dowry act from 1957. And when it was passed, it was announced in parliament that this is going to completely eliminate the evil of dowry. Fifty years ago the act was passed. Acts do not change people. It is people have to change by a more sustained work. By merely passing a Jan Lokpal bill you cannot put an end to corruption. So, what has happened in this anti-corruption movement Trust against corruption is lost. The trust against black money is gone. So this has also become a strategy of the government. They have created one Lokpal bill and made the Jan Lokpal bill and Lokpal bill of theirs clash in which corruption and black money has been put on the black burner. We have to bring this to the fore. Because this affects the society, this affects the economy, this brings about inequality. At Subramanian Swami that day in Hyderabad, so beautifully articulated, black money changes the very method of production. Because, and so those things are produced, investment takes place in those high-end items. So this completely disturbs the national economy, changes the investment models. So it is not just corruption and black money as evils. No, they completely reorder our national priorities, economic priorities, businessmen's priorities, investment priorities. So it is an interlinked affair. It is not failure of values and ethics. It is erosion in the capacity of the nation to develop itself, to ensure that the entire Indian population is happy. This impairs that kind of approach and model. And so we need to put our energies together with people who are concerned for the country in which they are not the center. If we become the center of our life, our ability to contribute to the country goes down. Contribute to any cause goes down. So we have brought together people for whom the country is the center, the society is the center. Our credit, our, our values and culture are central to their life. The attempt is to increase this population, to reach out to more and more people and Jutan is the starting point of this and I am extremely happy that I had occasion to share my thoughts before a set of people who have the capacity to improve upon it, who have the capacity to articulate it, take it to thousands of people and bring together thousands and thousands of this kind and I hope that as the initiators of the Jutan have envisioned, this transforms into a very powerful movement, movement of very serious people, which can not only strike a different path,
which can bring about changes within the political parties, their leadership, their approach, the government, the laws, and also give an alternative view to the media, which is 24 by 7 dominating our mind with thoughts which are fixed. They also need an alternative. I think this Judon will be the starting point of purveying these great ideas. Thank you very much.